This is Deborah Atkinson, and you're listening to Flipping 50, where I address your top questions and things you struggle with most so you can have more energy and less decision fatigue about what to eat, how to move, and you can change your thoughts to Flip 50 with the life and the energy you love in this second half. And I am not going to pretend that this show needs much more introduction. If you got the title, I want to want sex, but I don't, you know why you're here. So without further ado, my guest today, Susan Bratton, is a champion and advocate for all who desire passionate relationships. Considered the Dear Abby of sex, Susan's fresh approach and original ideas have helped millions of people of all ages and across the gender spectrum transform sex into passion. Married to her husband, Tim, since 1993, Susan is an author, award-winning speaker, and serial entrepreneur who teaches passionate lovemaking techniques to her fans around the world. Susan has been featured in the New York Times and on CNBC and the Today Show, as well as appearing on ABC, CBS, The CW, Fox, and the NBC as the Marriage Magician. Susan is Chair Emeritus of the Ad Tech Conference. She was both CMO and a member of the Board of Directors for an Anthony Robbins tech startup, as well as serving on numerous boards throughout her career. In 2009, Susan was honored as a Silicon Valley Women of Influence by the Business Journal and as a top 10 internet pioneer by Ad Age Magazine. In 2010, was bestowed the Lifetime Industry Achievement Award by DMG World Media. Susan's straight-talking, fearless approach, by the way, you might want to get the children out of the room, is rooted in her personal experience of watching her sex life with her while she and her husband pursued dynamic careers. When their relationship hit a crisis point, the couple made a fierce commitment to do whatever it took to keep their family together and revive the passion in their marriage. Today, she and her husband have the kind of a dream relationship most people long since stop believing is even possible until they discover Susan's teachings. Susan is CEO and co-founder with her husband of Personal Life Media. Through her company, Susan has authored 20 books, including Relationship Magic, The Passion Patch, and 30 Romance Tricks That Work Like Magic, as well as her international number one Amazon bestseller, Sexual Soulmates, The Six Essentials for Connected Sex. Now stay with me here. Do not run off to Amazon yet. She has also created and published numerous online courses, including her wildly popular Revive Her Drive and Steamy Sex Ed, DVD collection, as well as programs such as Seduction Trilogy, Expand Her Orgasm Tonight, The Multi-Orgasmic Lover for Men, Female Liquid Orgasm, and Keep Her Coming. Millions of couples and singles have been touched by her TV appearances in Better Lover YouTube channel through her Insiders Club newsletter at personallifemedia.com. Susan gives away free of charge countless mp3 audios videos articles and ebooks susan believes that shame-free frequent sexual pre- pleasure is every man and woman's birthright after 25 years of marriage i know from experience that deep passionate intimacy with my partner is priceless a priority that tops my list of must-haves along with good health and the love of family and friends I've made it my mission to aid anyone who wants the kind of lovemaking that improves with age. Susan, thanks so much for being here. Deborah, it's so funny when you were reading my bio, I I have to tell you, I recently asked one of my employees' desks to just go through and figure out how many books I've written, how many books and online programs I've written. And so she's been digging up all the books that that I've written over the years. And I have to, you're going to love the title of this one. How to get your wife to love having sex with you more than buying new shoes. Ooh, that's a juicy one. <laughs> yeah, right? More than Nordstrom's. There we go. Exactly. Like seriously, if, if you don't excite her as much as Nordstrom, you need to work on your game, buddy. Oh, so much fun. But, you know, a lot of times women think that there's something wrong with them because they don't want their husband. You know, like, oh, all right, we'll do it. and Or they, they have sex with them, but then... 
at the end, after they've had sex, they're like, oh yeah, we should do that more often. But then they never want to. It's just this funny thing. And uh, so many times guys come to me because one of my programs, Revive Her Drive, is uh, for men, married men, whose wives have stopped wanting them for sex. And they, of course, don't know what to do. They've tried begging and they've tried honeydews and they've tried, you know, uh, ultimatums and whining and, you know, you name it and nothing's worked. A million foot rubs and nothing's worked. And uh, so they find their way to me and I teach them what it really takes to keep a woman interested in you as a husband, because nobody really teaches our guys that. And a lot of women go around beating themselves up, feeling bad about the fact that they don't really initiate sex. And it kind of takes them a lot to get over the hump. And, you know, they want to want their guy more. And, and, um, I think one of the things we should really talk about is how it's actually totally natural and that we women don't need to beat ourselves up. We need to teach our husbands what to do. I love that. I so love that. And this is such great timing. We recently, so one of our Flipping 50 master classes monthly, this most recent one we've done is you and I are talking today was about how to boost your libido. Yeah. And and I had kind of a call out to my community, you know, tell me specifically what are your questions? Because I know we've got them. In fact, Flipping 50 TV episodes, we've done now 39, but I think a libido question was one of the second or the third episodes I did because it's that common. And I knew I was speaking not just to that one person, but to hundreds, dozens who ask on a regular basis. And the words they use sadden me. Like, I'm trying to be a good wife, but blah, blah, blah. And it's like, oh, oh, geez, it needs to be for you too. Let's figure this out. (laughs) But one thing I love, and yet, you know, I can't, I'm a small town Midwest girl, Susan. So you can't take the girl out of the, the small town girl out of the girl. But you know, I read your titles and I have to wonder if anybody listening even just flinched a little bit or raised eyebrows because even still in our 50s and 60s and 70s, we may not be comfortable using those words that you so easily do. Can you comment on that a little bit? Yeah. First of all, it takes practice. Uh, I I wasn't always, it wasn't always easy for me to say those things. I've been doing this for about 15 years, being this trusted hot sex advisor to millions. And I grew into the job, if you will. And I'm very, very comfortable with, you know, all the anatomy words, as well as all the dirty words. Nothing really bothers me anymore, but that's because I've just used them and said them so many times. The, the thing is that we can desensitize ourselves from the shock value of things. And then that allows us to embrace them more. So it's probably good practice for you to listen to my po- this podcast with me today because <laughs> it'll actually help raise your libido. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I love it. All right. So let's let's dive in. And I think to this one, and we've we've really teased this one up for and we flirted, right, around this. But why don't we have raging hormones and horniness like the guys do? Testosterone versus estrogen. We're kind of screwed from the get go, De- get go, Deborah. Um, estrogen is our dominant sex hormone as women, and it gets us in our head instead of in our body. It makes us worry about a million things at once. It's susceptible to stress and anxiety much more so than testosterone dominant men who have a naturally higher driving everyday libido. Their testosterone soars in the morning, which means that they want sex every morning when they get morning wood. And you want your husband or your boyfriend to get wood in the morning because that's a sign of health. Um, but it's hard because you've got to get up and get a million things done. You takes you an hour to get ready. It takes him five and a half minutes if he's, you know, really grooming himself. You know, so there's just like all these inequities, not to mention the fact that we are hormonally cyclical. And even after menopause, a lot of women think, okay, well, my, my sex drive's going to die because, you know, my libido's going to die because I'm going to lose, you know, estrogen after I stop having my menses. And so I'm naturally going to be low in libido. And that 
that's actually not true. You could have very low estrogen and and testosterone and still have a very high libido. A lot of women, you know, I, I was talking to Ariel Ford the other day and she said she quoted something that said our grandmothers are had more sex than we do. And it was so they we, had less stress. They have that's exactly right. They had less yeah. stress. We have this false idea. It's a limiting belief that um that our sex life declines when we go through menopause. It doesn't actually. Now, that being said, I am also a big proponent of bioidentical hormone replacement therapy, and I take estrogen and testosterone and mm-hmm. progesterone and oxytocin. I put an oxytocin cream, a compounded pharmacy oxytocin cream intravaginally on a daily basis, just a little bit of oxytocin. It does wonders with the estrogen to keep that tissue very fluffy. So we do have, when when our estrogen declines, we do get a thinning of the vaginal tissue, which can make sex painful. And we can circle back to the the wellness strategies for keeping your body feeling sexy. But let's stay with the fact that we are cyclically hormonal. So throughout the month, our hormones ebb and flow. And uh, even after we stop menstruating, we still go through that ovulation type of cycle. We just don't drop an egg. So there are times when we're more predisposed to having sex and less predisposed. But where I think the real trouble comes in, frankly, is not really that. It's a couple of things that I think lend themselves. Number one, let me just throw out a few few different ones that happen. Number one, um, your husband... And I'm just going to go with the monogamous couple. I know there are single women out there and it's different. We can, we could circle back to dating, but let's just take the, you know, uh, man and wife married for 10 or more years or even three or four years. Uh, and your love hormones wane, that new relationship energy dries up, dries up. So you're just less hot and horny for each other. And then, for men, it's very easy for them to have intercourse and and have a climax. So it feels so good to them to be inside us that it's easy for them to, to climax. It's much harder for us. Orgasm is a learned skill, especially orgasm from penetration. So if you've made love to your husband for a decade and he's gotten off and you maybe have some of the time, that's he's basically been masturbating inside you and expecting to get sex when it's been hard for you and you're struggling. So why would you want to? Another thing that's an issue is that guys are stinky and scratchy and they don't have good oral care and their grooming is for shit. And we women's number one thing. I love you so much. Ah, Can I just right? <laughs> Speak the truth. You know, they're hairy barbarians with morning wood. God love them. And I love them. I am a men's advocate. So when I say these things, it's more just like my empathy for them in some ways. You know, they, they don't do any manscaping. When was the last time they went and got their teeth cleaned? You know, there's a lot of these kinds of things where after a while, you just you don't find them attractive. They've got some weight on them or what have you. And then they do the same thing every time because it feels good to them, right? So good. Yes. So Mm -hmm. that is boring for us. We get bored to death with those scratchy barbarians. And so then we start avoiding sex. And as soon as we start avoiding, and what happens is because we're taught to be good little girls, We're giving them sex as our wifely duty that we're not really enjoying. And that puts a chip on the shoulder of your vagina. Your vagina gets an attitude like harumphity dumphity. I didn't really like that. So then the next time you ask your vagina to perform for you, she's like, oh, I don't really want to. I'll do it, but I'm not going to have a good time because you had sex. She didn't really want. And so that feeds on itself. So that's another thing. And then if there's stuff going on in the relationship, especially around money, Hmm. then you get pissed off about that. And how are you ever going to have sex with someone when you're pissed that they're not bringing home the bacon or they're a slob or what, you know, so you've got that issue. And then you've got your kids and your kids give you no privacy. They suck the life out of you, right? So you've got that. And of course your job where you're constantly, so you see, 
you just stacking all this stuff up and you're like, ah, what's the answer, Susan Bratton? I know all the problems. <laughs> yeah. And let's pause just for a second and elaborate on the job. I think back yeah. to your comment about, you know, our grandparents having more sex than us, you know, that brings us to work. Really recently, I heard John Gray talk about this a little bit. In he lives that, right down the street from me, good old John Gray. Does he really? Yeah. I love him. He's a doll. You know, but we're going off to work and we're putting on this, you know, he-man stuff. And and we we have to up our testosterone and our alpha girl. And then we have to figure out how do we shift gears now to go home and be taken care of and and be the feminine side. And I think that is really hard. Yeah. Uh, the polarity, you end up being best friends and you lose that animal magnetism, that masculine feminine polarity that you had. And so that exacerbates it even more. And you have trouble getting out of your head and into your body, all those things. So here's what I figured out are the tricks, the workarounds. Okay. So here's the advice. Um, I'm going to say a couple of different techniques, if you will. Remember when we went back to that good girl where we're taught to just go along with stuff and do our wifely duty and not ask for what we want. A lot of women say, well, I don't even know what I want. I just know I don't want what I have. Yeah. So there's that too. It's like, okay, it's all good and well for you to tell me to ask what I want, but I don't know what I want. So there's that thing too. And so here's my solution for that. And it's called the sexual soulmate pact. And some husbands are very difficult to train. Oh my God, it takes them like six months to get this. But I want you to persist. Do not give up. And here's why. He's going, if, if he's the kind of guy that, that has trouble with this technique, he will get there. And it is your job to train him because he is testosterone forward. And so he thinks he knows what he's doing. It's not his fault. He has no clue what he's doing. God love him. He thinks he does, but he doesn't. But his testosterone tricks tricks him into having that certainty. That's how come men can go out and wage wars and build bridges and do all those things that men do because they think they know. Where women, we put into the same situation where we're like, well, we're not sure. Maybe we should all get together and talk about how we do this. <laughs> it's like totally different, right? So I want you to train your husband. I want you to teach him this. And I'm going to give you a link. It's just sexual soulmate pact, P-A-C-T, like an agreement, dot com. Sexual soulmate pact. Dot com. Awesome. Go okay. get the book. So I'm going to explain it to you and then you can go download the book and then you can teach your husband how to do it. You can make him read the book. You could read the book over a date night. You could read the book to him in bed. It's super short. I like Play little subliminally hidden. while he's sleeping. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Hypnotize him and read it into his mind. <laughs> Cut up the little papers and put it in his breakfast cereal. <laughs> Uh, but here's what'll happen. It'll, it'll make your sex life a million times better. And it'll really help you understand what you actually want. And let's go back to how it works. So the sexual soulmate pact is an agreement that you two have. And what you're going to do is you're going to, first of all, acknowledge that you are a hormonally cyclical woman, that one day you need to be stroked and held very gently. You need to be held for a long time. You need to feel his masculinity. You need his arms around you to calm you down. And then another day, you might feel like a lioness. You want to be pawed and manhandled and totally taken. And you want a pounding instead of a delicate little love making. You know, you every day because you're hormonally cyclical, what you want changes. Where for him, he's more steady state. So he doesn't really understand how you have this wide range of things that feel good to you that differ all the time, which is why when he does the same thing every time, it bores you out of your mind because you're different in every moment and he's not as different in every moment. So he doesn't know. So what I call this is reporting in from your animal. You are an animal. As much as you'd like to think you've got this big brain and that homo sapien is something better than a wolf or a dove or a whale or a raven, we are all animals on this planet and we are driven by our hormones, how much blood sugar we have, how much sleep we've gotten, et cetera, et cetera. 
our bodies run us and they want and need certain things at certain times. So the more you can tune into your body, the more you'll realize what she wants. And then you are simply reporting in from your animal. You're letting your guy know what your kitty cat or your lioness needs in the moment. And what's great about it is that, and there's another piece to this that's really important. When he understands that when you give him feedback, you have no control over your body, that you're just telling him and like giving him the clues he needs to do a good job, that allows him to start to get better in bed than he is because he hasn't been getting enough information to do a good job. But the problem is that most women are afraid to give feedback because their man contracts or takes it personally. I'm afraid to hurt his ego, you know, that kind of thing. Or if I say something to him, he goes, I know, which negates the information, which, you know, he cannot do that. He needs to learn and he will If you stay with it and you remind him that I'm just telling you what my body needs so you can do a better job because I know you want to give me incredible pleasure. So if when I tell you things, two things, number one, I don't have to use my manners. I don't have to say, honey, would you please stroke my clitoris softer? You can just say softer. (laughs) Then what's happening is you don't have to get out of your head. And into, you don't have to get out of your body and into your head to use your manners. Your manners are a different brainwave state. Your good girl is a brainwave state that is not your primal animal. So you want to be able to blurt things out without saying please and thank you. And he has to know that he's actually doing you, you're doing him a favor by staying in your animal body and just telling him what you need in the moment. and. The agreement, this is where the agreement comes in, not just the you won't contract, you won't negate, you won't get your ego hurt, but not only am I not going to use any manners, every time I do it, I want you to say thank you to me. Now that seems totally unfair. How come he has to say thank you, but you don't have to say please? Here's why. Because what he's doing in his masculine polarity is encouraging you to Tell him what you need by thanking you and letting you know that you have been heard. Now, he doesn't have to say thank you every time. He could say, okay, baby, or how's this, or got it, or does this feel better, or you mean like this, or "Mm mm-hmm. He can do anything he wants to acknowledge you, but the acknowledgement is encouragement for you to keep telling him what you need. Oh yeah. Can you do it three short, three really short strokes in and then five long, deep ones? Yeah. Like that. No deeper, no slower. Yeah. That's it. Okay. Three and then five, three and then five, go. You know, like that. (laughs) You're going to teach him what feels good to your yoni, which is another word for vagina, which is not what we call it anymore. We call it the vulva because vagina is just the canal. And women feel, young women these days feel like it's white male patriarchy to call our genitals a vagina. So we call it a vulva. But a nice word for it too is yoni, Y-O-N-I, which is like a Hindu or Sanskrit term for your genitals, your female genitals. The men's version is lingam instead of penis. So you can call it a yoni. So um, when you get really specific about what feels great in the moment and you blurt it out without worrying about how it sounds and he doesn't take it personally and he encourages you by saying, got it, uh-huh, baby, how's this? Oh my God, especially if he does it in that deep, low voice. Yeah, baby, I got it. How's that? Do you like that? When when he's doing that, then all of a sudden you're getting the kind of stimulation that your body wants in that moment from him. And what you're ultimately doing, which is what guys need, is making him a winner. He needs to feel like he's winning and doing a great job. A lot of women think that men are selfishly sexual. You know, when they're using you as a masturbatory tool for a decade, you would think so. But actually, <laughs> it's coming from sheer ignorance. They, the only sex education they got is porn. And porn is degrading to women. And they do it. They watch porn and they masturbate because you're not having sex with them. So all they're do- so if you had more sex with them, they'd watch less porn and they'd become better lovers. So it's a win, win, win. 
Oh man, I love it. So many rich tips. I love, love, love this. And yet, okay, so we're really talking about the part of wanting more sex from the shoulders up so far. I mean, there are some physical things here, but it's really about how you go about getting it, getting into your body and out of your head. And you have to think a little bit and practice that. But there are some real physical things that women, especially midlife women and beyond, have to deal with. So ideas, Susan, what can be done about pain, dryness, fatigue? Before we talk about all of those things, which I have a wealth of knowledge, I'm going to tell you so many, I'm just going to drop so much great info on you. I have been through all of this, but before I do, I want to talk about something called engorgement. Have you ever heard that term, Deborah? I have. Okay, great. What What does it mean to you? To me, it means there's a lot of blood flow and directly to that area because you're focused on it and excited. Exactly. So women have in our clitoral structure, our clitoris looks like a little man, a little starfish, a little person. It's got a head and a neck, which is the shaft. It's got little arms, which are called the crora that drape over the entrance to our vagina on each side. And it has big puffy legs, which are called vestibular bulbs, which are found underneath your pubic hair on the left and right side of your vaginal opening. Um, and all of that is erectile tissue that is essentially the tissue that is analogous to his penis. The, we also have something called a urethral sponge. It's called a G spot also most commonly. And that's on the top or the roof of our vaginal opening and inside, as well as wrapped all around uh, where our urine exits our body, which is halfway between the clitoris and the opening to your vagina. The opening to your vagina is called your introitus. It's a sphincter muscle. It's a, it's a little round muscle. And that's often what gets the most painful when you start to have estrogen dips. Then you also have something called a perineal sponge, which is on the floor of your vagina between your vagina and your rectum. So you have all this erectile tissue, plus you have erectile tissue in your breasts, your nipples, your lips, your nose, your neck, your throat, your tongue, and your mouth. And all of your body is erogenous in addition to having all that erectile tissue. So the more that your partner gives you full body touch, the more that they touch your breasts and not just your nipples, the more that they kiss you and kiss your neck and kiss your cheeks and kiss your nose and kiss your eyes and kiss your uh, your forehead, the more that they play with all of the tissue in your vulva or yoni, the more that they do that and they bring blood flow all over your body, the more that engorgement increases sensation. And with more sensation, you have more pleasure and more orgasms and more orgasmic intensity. One of the most important things is to get regular yoni massages from your partner where you get to lie down, butterfly your legs open, put pillows under them, get some organic coconut oil. And I like to say that I would never put anything in my, if I I would never put anything in my yoni that I wouldn't put in my mouth. So that's why I like organic coconut oil. You can drink it. So you can put it in your yoni and use as much as you need. And it seeps into your skin and it makes the skin very pliable and very um, lubricated, which is great. So once you give him the opportunity to spend a lot of time down there rubbing you, the man who starts out as all thumbs with a big ego saying, I know what I'm doing, and then he touches you like a gorilla, a scra- a scrapey, <laughs> scratchy gorilla. That guy, you start that guy on your training program with your sexual soulmate pact, and you keep teaching him, teaching him. Every time he says, thank you, or mm-hmm, I got it, baby, you go, thank you, baby. That made me feel so good to tell you what I really need. You're such a good lover. Thank you. And if his hands are scratchy and you can, he can rub oil all over them, make sure he trims his fingernails, he manscapes, he shaves really well, he's showered before he has sex with you. That's a con- Condition of sex for me. I don't make love with my husband unless he is 110% groomed. I don't like dirty sex. I like my husband clean. 
He just takes care of that because he knows that helps me get into my body more. It might not be important to you. Whatever is important to you, your guy needs to know what those things are because it's going to up his odds of having sex. And then when you let him play with your yoni and teach him how to touch it and squeeze that thing. Now take that and roll it between your fingers. Do just downstrokes. Don't stroke up against the fur. That doesn't feel good. Oh yeah, that feels really nice. Go in the channel right there. Oh, do that softer. Oh, do that 20 more times. Do that until I say stop. Don't stop doing that. Just keep doing that. Oh my God, that feels so good. At the end, when he's done, you're like, oh my God, you're getting so good at that. When's the next time we can have a date to do it? Right? So when you do that and you allow him to get over being all thumbs and to really learn how to become dexterous. Now, some guys are naturally dexterous. Men, some men are really good with their hands. They're great with their fingers. They're just really good at the bat right off the bat, but most men aren't. And all they need is time in the saddle to get good. So what you do is you say, we're going to schedule sex dates. And in these sex dates, we're going to learn things together. And one of the things I think we should start with is something I learned from this awesome marriage magician called Susan Bratton, and it's called engorgement. And I'm going to give you lingam massages, and you're going to give me yoni massages, and we're going to learn about what feels good to each other. Sometimes I'm going to get a yoni massage and I'm not going to, I'm just going to roll over and go to sleep and I'm not going to have sex. But sometimes I might have sex with you, but that's not why we're doing it. You're not doing a yoni massage to get sex for me. You're doing a yoni massage to fill me up with engorgement and orgasms so that I want more sex with you. Cause I want to want sex, but I don't want it because I haven't been engorged enough. I've learned this thing and I want to try it, but I also want to rub your penis and play with your penis, but I don't want to have to take you to climax because then it's performance anxiety and pressure. And you can masturbate yourself to climax, but I just want to learn my way around your penis, make it feel really good and actually learn to get to the point, because Susan told me I could, where it turns me on to play with your penis and I start getting turned on just touching your penis and playing with it. And I get pleasure from just playing with you and I'm not shying away from you anymore. So this is what I want to do for the next few months is just have a lot of these lovemaking dates where we lock the door and we do genital massage to each other. And what comes, what co- comes, comes, but no <laughs> pressure. There's no pressure. Pun intended. Exactly. Then I don't want to have any pressure to ever go all the way or do anything I don't want to do because I've done that too long and look where it got us. So let's start over. We're going to have a do-over on our sex life. So once you get the engorgement going and he starts to understand his way around your yoni because you're finally opening up your legs and letting him blunder around down there for a while. <laughs> and then you're giving him great feedback. So you're starting to train him and he starts to know what to do. Then you'll see that the scheduled sex dates bring you closer together. You're doing more holding, more touching. You're having fun. You're starting to anticipate it. You're looking forward to it. It starts to build on itself. So you combine the yoni massage and the lingam massage with the sexual soulmate pact and having him just hold you more and Give him little kisses as he walks by and really try to up the affection. Um, Then you will suddenly see that you start to want sex more, except if it's painful. So that's what we could talk about now if you want to. Let's do. That was amazing. Thank you. It makes sense though, right? I mean, you have to set your boundaries. Yeah, so does. And they're just happy to get their hands on you in many ways, right? (laughs) I mean, they just miss you. They miss you. It's true. It's true. Men need a lot of touching and holding. You know, they cannot generate their own oxytocin. They can only do it when you touch them. They need you. Also, this is a really good thing too. One of the great things about being flipping 50, because so much of it sucks. (laughs) (laughs) It's like downhill on gravity. But one of the really great things about it is that if you can't conceive anymore, you can have unprotected sex. So yeah. you can have um, him ejaculate inside you and his semen has serotonin boosters. It has testosterone in it. And one of the things that I love about getting a quote unquote testosterone injection from my husband is that 
you know, as we become little old ladies, we get scared of things and we get a little bit more anxious and nervous. And when we get our husband's semen inside us, he gives us a testosterone boost that makes us feel more confident and courageous and less anxious. So the your vaginal mucosa, the lining of your vagina, which is just like the lining of your mouth, it's actually a sponge that absorbs all of the great, there's over 20 really amazing things in his semen that are very symbiotic for your mental health, cognitive function, uh, confidence, all kind, uh, the rhythms of your cycles, because you still cycle, even though you don't drop an egg, you still cycle. So um, if you can have unprotected sex, do it as much as you can, because it's very good for you. And then um, if sex is painful, there are a couple of different types of things. One is that it hurts up inside because of the thinning of your vaginal tissue. Mm -hmm. Another is that you have pelvic pain. Sometimes it's nerve pain and sometimes it's muscle pain. If you feel tight, too tight, or sometimes you have vaginal laxity as you lose muscle tone as you age, your vaginal uh, tissue gets loose and you don't feel like you had the grip around his penis you once had. So you could have, God, you could have all those problems at once too. You know, it's like, can we catch a flipping break, right? <laughs> exactly. I mean, oh my God, so many problems. So here are the some- two for one you didn't know you signed up for. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so um, there's a couple of things that I have done that have really changed my life. One of them is I love bioidentical hormone replacement therapy. I use bioidentical estrogen balanced with progesterone, and I also supplement with testosterone. Now I have mine created at a compounding pharmacy, and I put have them put in organic coconut oil, not in the carrier creams, because the carrier creams are made full of petroleum and stuff, which I wouldn't eat. So I'm sure not going to put it in my yoni. So I'm super fussy. And I have my stuff compounded in organic coconut oil. As I said, I also use oxytocin. I tend to be low on oxytocin. I'm not a big oxytocin generator. So I have my husband hold me a lot to generate oxytocin and I supplement intravaginally. I put it inside my vagina, oxytocin suspended in coconut oil. And that, in addition to the estrogen, keeps my vagina tissue, the vaginal mucosa, plump and youthful. I wish I could slather it all over my whole body. I wonder if that would work. (laughs) I like um, Kathy's Healing Lotion for my body. You can get it on Amazon. It's not as greasy as coconut oil and it's all natural. There's nothing in it that's bad for you. Kathy's Healing Lotion lotion, really good uh, to keep your skin good. You got to keep your skin emollient as you age because your skin is your largest organ of your body. And it's very important for detoxing. It's very important for just healthy aging. Generally, just keep yourself as moist as you can. And when you feel good, your skin feels good. You feel like you look good. And that also, I think, makes a huge difference in how ready you are. Yes, of course. And lingerie covers a multitude of sins and makes your husband happy. So sometimes, um, you know, like a cupless, crotchless onesie, you know, red velvet with some little, you know, lace on it or whatever can cover up a belly that feels big or, you know, whatever is your, you know, a little skirt to cover up if your butt feels wide or, you know, you can really compensate. I like lingerie as a compensating mechanism for those little areas of my body when I feel a little self-conscious. And that's also one of those cyclical things. Sometimes I feel great and don't care how I look. And other times I feel a little bit like, gosh, I wish I was a little younger looking. So you just go with the flow and you, you compromise and do what you can. But um, I want to go back to the the things that I've done. So one is that I've done the bioidentical hormone replacement. The next is that because I had a lot of pain right at the entrance to my vagina, the introidal sphincter, it got like broken glass. And even having hormone replacement wasn't fixing it. Even using lube, which you should always use tons of lube, wasn't fixing it. And the great thing about coconut oil as lube is you can just wipe it right off and he can go down on you whenever you want because it's not yucky old, you know, yucky stuff. It's just oil. You could make your salad with it. Um, I've also used um, a CO2 laser. 
it's called FemiLift. There's also, there was Mona Lisa. I don't know if that's still out there anymore, but the CO2 lasers, they actually do, if you've ever had like a fraxel on your skin to get rid of age spots, it's a fractionated laser that does um, uh, subcutaneous damage to the vaginal tissue, but only a little bits of the tissue, not the whole thing. It doesn't like burn the crap out of your entire vagina. It actually does, it only burns part of your vagina. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> but it doesn't burn the I feel so relieved. I uh, know. But it burns the <laughs> subdermal layers. And then what that does is it brings in healing and growth factors from your own body. Like if you skin, if you burned and burned yourself or skinned your knee or whatever. And yeah. then it repairs the tissue and it um stimulates new growth and new collagen and it thickens the tissue up. So with a CO2 laser, you have to do multiple passes. You have to go in three or four or five times till you feel like the pain is gone and the tissue is nice and rich and supple again. That gets rid of va- vaginal laxity if you feel like you're getting big down there, which is nice. It tightens everything up because the collagen plumps it all up again. So then you get a grip on your guy's penis that's like, ooh, I, that hasn't felt as good since I was 35. You know, it feels really good again, which is great. Now there's a new brand I'm checking out that's called Vaviv, V-A-V-I-V-E-V, Vaviv really was how you'd kind of spell it. And that's an RF or radio frequency device. And that works really well up inside your vagina. And they say that's a one pass treatment. I've had the radio frequency on my outer labia, the part that's, you know, under the fur to plump that back up purely cosmetic. But I did it because I'm a sex expert and I can. And it gets a little saggy down there. It almost looks like scrotal tissue when you get old, which is so disgusting. Your pubic hair starts to go gray and your, your labia start to sag. And you're like, what? The injustices of life are too many. You know, you're like, no. So if you want, you can actually plump your vagina lips back up again with RF as well. And, you know, to each their own. Mommy, don't judge. Yeah, I want you to be happy. You do whatever you want to do, mama. You got to love your yoni. So, uh, and then I've had three O shots or orgasm shots and mm-hmm. they don't hurt because they put numbing cream on. They take your own blood. They spin it in a little um, ellipse spinner uh, centrifuge. They pull out the PRP, the platelet rich plasma, the same stuff they stick in your joints and your neck and your toes and things when you go to the orthopedic surgeon or the orthopedic guy. And they actually inject it into your clitoral tissue. And that clitoris I described earlier, the little starfish, the arms, the legs, the head, the neck, that's a sponge of erectile tissue and it soaks up your PRP and it brings all kinds of new tissue regeneration to your clitoral structure, which means you get more sensation back. You actually have sensation loss. You have vaginal atrophy, which includes clitoral tissue atrophy as you age. And you get, I mean, I was 55 when I had it and I felt like I was 35 again. I was having the most, I am having the most incredible orgasms of my life from the O shots, the Femi lift, the uh, the RF on my labia, all that stuff that I did. Oh my gosh, I am so glad I did it. It was completely worth it. I had a facelift at fifty two, and then I at fifty five, I like basically lifted my vajayj, and ah, oh, it's so good. So those things are available. They're out there. And by the way, if your husband, who's in the same shape as you are, is having penile atrophy. I recommend the Gaines Wave treatments. They are miracle workers. They use an acoustic healing to, to basically knock off all the, um, the fats and stuff that get stuck in the uh, penile arteries and get the blood flow pumping and generate new tissue again. So he gets a firmer, harder erection. So what's good for the goose is good for the gander or vice versa. Uh, you guys can both go in and get, you know, entire, you know, genital rejuvenation and um, have great sex until the day you die. You just have to want to do it and, you know, you can even put it on payments. Like literally I was looking at what the cost of gains wave was. You could pay for it over 14 months and get six sessions for $397 a month. And I thought that's doable, you know, so where there's a will, there's a way most of the time. 
So we've got options. So good. Susan, you are, you have shared so many tip rich ways. To- <laughs> that is just the tip of the iceberg. That's just the oh head of the clitoris. <laughs> oh my gosh. It's so good. But I think what you've really done, I mean, the bottom line is there's hope and there is so much yeah. that you can do and you can hear yeah. in your voice your passion for what you're doing and the vibrancy and vitality you've got. So tell us one more time, the URL where listeners can go and get your free gift. Sexual soulmate pact, P A C T.com. Fantastic. And listeners, if we missed a question that you were too bashful to ask, you can always ask (laughs) it by adding a comment, leave it below the show link at flipping 50.com forward slash want sex. And there is a hyphen between the two and join us on the flipping 50 TV, Facebook page to get all the juicy resources, the tips. I took great notes for you and the links that we mentioned in the show. Visit again today's show notes at flipping 50.com forward slash want sex. Don't forget the dash between them. And if you enjoy the show, please leave a rating in iTunes. It really helps. And then Share this with a friend, a girlfriend, maybe your guy friend, and surround yourself with a supportive community of women on the same journey. What are you waiting for? Let's start flipping 50 together.